How you doing? Welcome back. I'm doing great, man. I'm happy to be back. <laughs> hey, can you tell us how this came together? Um, I think there's an assumption that, you know, as soon as you left the Seahawks, you must have been talking to Chris Kacarek or something. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, what, uh, how, was it that, was it that simple? Uh, pretty much. I mean, like, once I got released from uh, Seattle, it kind of was like, you know, what's the best situation for me, you know? This this point in my career, I just want to I want to find a place that's comfortable and I'm familiar with and a place where I know I can, you know, be myself and play ball. What um, Tell us about what happened in, in Seattle. I mean, obviously your status went down. I mean, it looked like you probably didn't have a year you were thrilled about. Um, if that's the case, kind of what, what went into that, do you feel like? Well, I always have high expectations for myself. And, you know, and coming off a career year, you just kind of expect to, you know, build on that momentum. And uh, I feel like I had a good season, but, you know, stats don't always tell the whole story. You know what I mean? So I might not have had the stats and stuff like that, but I feel like as a player I grew and I got better last year. Now that you're reuniting with Chris Kacarek for the third time, you know him very well. What is it about him that brings out the best in you? Why are you guys a good pairing? Uh, I think it's trust, you know I mean? For him to, he puts me on the field and he, he trusts me to make it happen. You know, it's not a situation where he's worried about what I'm going to do or he's going to pull me, he doesn't like what I'm doing. You know, he trusts me to get the job done and, and I'm able to get out there and really get into a rhythm. I think that's kind of the biggest thing. Did you reach out to Chris? I mean, directly, or, or does uh, it not work? Does no, it not work that like that? No, we actually didn't talk like you know during this process. I talked to him for the first time for today. You know, uh, you know, he's my D line coach. You know, he tried to stay out of the business part of it and just kind of let you know the guy, the guys up top handle that kind of stuff. You know, and uh, you know, as soon as it, as soon as it was over though, I knew you had my back through the whole process, and you know, was happy to see each other. When you were here a couple of seasons ago, the defensive coordinator was Robert Sala. Now it's D'Amico Ryan's who was here. But has the defense changed much in your eyes, or is it pretty similar? I think it's. I think you know. Obviously, D'Amico has his own spin on it. You know, it's not. I want to say it's always similar, but you know, some of the roots are the same. You know, he wants guys that are going to run to the ball, going to be aggressive, that's going to play hard, and you know, and just you know, put everything they got on the field. You know, I think that's not necessarily a D'Amico thing. It's kind of a 49er thing. It's kind of what we stand on, and just playing hard and playing for one another. You're you're an old man now in the NFL, um, relatively speaking, almost 31. I mean, given your hum relatively humble beginnings, did you? I mean, I don't know if you you think this far ahead, but I mean, did you think you'd still be playing foot in the NFL at this uh, at yeah, this age? I did, man. I always had like belief in myself. You know, I, I've had a unique journey, yes, but I always felt that I'd be able to, you know, produce for a while in the league. You know, I. I was never. I, I thought I was gonna get drafted. I thought I was gonna be a Hall of Famer. I think we all come into the league with high, you know, high expectations for ourselves and want to build a career. Last one. What? Um, I mean, obviously, it seemed like 2020 was, if not your best season, you know, right, right, right up there. What was um, obviously? opportunity was there for you but what what clicked for you in 2020 um to, to make that happen um again I don't, I don't know about clicking just you know the trust within the team and trust within my room my defense room you know uh chris like you said we got previous history so it's not a situation where i got to go out of my way to prove myself or do something outside of my body you know uh chris knows what i can do and what he expects from me and, and as a player that's you know that's, that's important to be able to come into a building and know what they want from you and what they expect from you and what you can do for them. Hey, Kerry, sorry, I came in a little late, so sorry if this question's been asked, but, um, you know, in 2020, you weren't able to play in front of home fans at Levi's Stadium. Mm -hmm. And I believe you came back, obviously, last year with the Seahawks, so you got a taste of it. But, mm -hmm. I mean, it's kind of like, you know, that 2020 season as a sack leader, you're almost like a ghost because you weren't here. So, are you looking forward to being around the home fan? Like just kind of the missing element from 2020. I really am, you know, and I'm a D lineman, so you look forward to that third down at home and 
you hear the crowd roaring behind you, you know, that's, you know, you live for those moments, you know. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited to get, you know, to hear the fans at Levi and, uh, and you know, and just hear them roar. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. When you signed, did they happen to tell you who the starting quarterback would be? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, they didn't. I just played D-line, man. I don't know about nothing else. <laughs> All right, Carrie, thank you. Uh, thank you, guys. It was good talking to y'all.